Are you exploring JAX and trying to understand what all these new terms mean? How are functional purity, immutability, and explicit state management going to help your machine learning model? And what's all the chatter about JIT even mean? Well, you've come to the right place. My name is Yufeng Guo, and in this video, we will break down all these terms and more, paving the way to helping you become a JAX master in no time. JAX is a Python library that's great for high-performance machine learning. But if you're used to traditional programming, mastering JAX requires a significant shift in your mental models, moving towards a functional world. This means instead of thinking of things as objects we act on, instead we apply functions. And in the case of machine learning, that's typically done to our data. But that's not all. JAX goes a step further than just being functional. It really forces the idea of functional purity. We're using the word pure here to describe a function that always does the same thing for the same set of inputs, no matter what. No, seriously, no matter what. Now, you might think that your functions already do that, right? That they already do the same thing every time. But you might be surprised. Have you ever modified a variable that lives outside of the function? Not pure. Ever read the value of something outside the function, like say a global parameter? Sorry, not pure. Everything must be explicitly passed in and then explicitly returned. Now that seems awfully restrictive, right? It is, but it's also the price to be paid for having blazing fast performance. Because functions can't do anything outside of exactly what is inside, JAX then can optimize your program way more, enabling it to run fast and scale well. So that means you can't change the value of an array because that would reference something outside of the function. You can make a copy though and return that copy, which is exactly what JAX does. JAX arrays cannot be modified in place. And it uses operations like x at index dot set y to create a new array with those modifications, leaving the original untouched. While this code might seem less performant when you and I look at it, it allows JAX's compiler to perform deep optimizations, often avoiding array creation intermediaries, and leading to significant speed gains. Once you adjust to the idea of everything must be pure functions, many of the rest of the ideas behind JAX kind of just flow out naturally. Let's take on the problem of state management next. We're pretty used to having a class or somewhat global object hold the parameters of our machine learning model and just passing it around. But with JAX, that's out. We need to pass our parameters around explicitly, typically as function arguments. This is why we say JAX has an explicit approach to state management. The typical JAX pattern is to explicitly thread state through functions. This means a function needing to read or modify state must accept the current state as an input and then return the new updated state as part of its output. For example, a training step would take the current state and data and then return an updated state along with whatever results. This explicitness, while likely more verbose, to be fair, it leads to much clearer reasoning and easier debugging when it comes to complex or especially parallel systems. Libraries like Flax, which is a neural network library built on top of JAX, design their models as stateless blueprints with parameters stored externally and then just passed around explicitly. Hopefully, now you're beginning to see how things are starting to fit together. Let's delve deeper into this idea of explicitly threading state with the topic of pseudo-random number generation, or PRNG for short, because I'm not gonna say pseudo-random number generation over and over again. 
PRNG is a great example of threading state throughout Jack's program. Because instead of setting a random key at the beginning of your program and forgetting about it, Jack's functions need you to explicitly tell them what the PRNG situation is using a PRNG key. Should we abbreviate that to PRNG K? No, no. A PRNG key is an array that serves as the explicit random state. And Jax's random functions read this key, but without modifying it. Because if it did, remember, then it's not pure. So providing the same key will always produce the same random sample, ensuring reliable reproducibility. Of course, we don't always want to use the exact same random state throughout the entire program. Sometimes we want to get a new state or pass a bunch of new states into different parallel threads. So to get different statistically independent samples, you must explicitly split that PRNG key into new subkeys before each use. The general rule of thumb here is to never reuse keys unless you are trying to generate identical outputs. This explicit management guarantees reproducibility and parallelizability, crucial for reliable scientific computing and large-scale machine learning research. Okay, home stretch. Just one more Jack's idea for you to digest. This one is coming just in time for the end of the video, and it's called Just-In-Time Compilation, or JIT for short. It compiles Jack's compatible Python functions into highly optimized machine code using a library called XLA, which stands for Accelerated Linear Algebra. I'll save that topic for another video. The reason I've included JIT in this video, though, is that it is actually yet another example of functional purity. When just-in-time compilation is performed, it compiles your code during that first invocation, and only the first invocation. It uses a process called tracing, where Jax executes the function with an abstract tracer object to record operations into what's called a Jaxper, or a Jax expression. This Jaxper is then compiled into efficient machine code. So really, in a certain sense, you're not really running Python code, right? You're writing Python that gets traced during JIT, compiled by XLA, and then that machine code is what gets actually run. Now, when tracing is performed, it is specialized to the path that the tracer takes. So if your program is not on its best behavior, and it goes off modifying some implicit state or starts depending on global variables, your JITed functions are probably not going to work like you expect. So one last thing before you go, since this JIT compilation only runs one time, right, first invocation, and it's specialized to the path that it takes, this means that if else statements and loops that depend on runtime values of JAX arrays within a JITed function can lead to errors or unexpected behaviors because maybe only one branch gets compiled, and that branch is the only one that executes. The key point here is that it's only when it depends on runtime values. Fixed values? No problem. But if you really have to make on-the-fly decisions at runtime, that's okay. You'll just need to use a special set of functions. One is called jax.lax.cond, as in conditional, or jax.lax.whileloop for any kind of dynamic control within a jitted function. That'll keep you out of trouble. Well, that's the gist of it. Or should I say the jit of it? If you can embrace the mental model shift of adopting functional purity, you'll be able to make sense of Jax's explicit state management, deterministic PRNG, and the implications of JIT compilation. And you'll be well on your way to effectively utilizing the unparalleled optimization and scalability of Jax. So what's been your biggest struggle with understanding Jax? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, let me know by clicking that like button. If you're wondering how to load data sets into the Jax ecosystem, check out Grain. It's a Python library, and I'll be making a video about that topic very soon. So that's all for now. 
I'll catch you in the next one.